builder's cleavage? Yeah. What? <laughs> no! Yes, that's Builder's just... cleavage? <laughs> that's not real. Yeah, that's definitely real. Hello everyone, Evan Edinger here with Heather. Heather, where are you from? I am from a tiny town in England called Marlow. And I grew up in the US. And so there's a lot of British words that I've actually never heard used. Maybe that's because they're mostly used in school and I never went to school here, or just because I hang around with some Americanized people. And so I wanted to bring up a list of words that I've learned recently are used here and ask, are these real? Because some of them I'm like, there's no way this is actually used. So let's jump into the first one. I think this one's one that's gonna blow your mind. When someone steals something from your house, what would you say they are? What's their, what have they done? To They've burgled you. They've burgled you. But in the US, we actually say we burglarize. This is actually the opposite of what I was gonna say with this video, but <laughs> yeah, burglarize, you know, cause he's a, bur he burgl he's a burglar, so he burglarizes. But he's burgled you. That sounds fake. <laughs> Honestly, now I'm saying it, it does sound fake. <laughs> burgled sounds like a, or such a cute, like, I feel like that's something Bilbo Baggins would say when the Sackville Bagginses came and took his stuff. They've burgled me. That's probably why it just sounds British. That's yeah. why. <laughs> Is burgled real? It's definitely real. Okay. It's, it's a thing. Anyway, moving on from burgle. In the US, if you have potatoes, for some reason, they're usually kept in a burlap sack. In the UK, you call them Hessian sacks. Yeah. Are you sure? No. <laughs> Did, did they fight in the Revolutionary War on the side of the Brits because the, they were German hired mercenaries known as the Hessians? <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> no, I we're, didn't. We're definitely taught this in American history. I was correct in my assumption. It's called a Hessian sack because of its use as, as part of the fabric in the uniform of soldiers from Hesse from Germany. So actually, there we go. I, I, was, I put one on one together by accident. Either way, Hessian. There's your fun fact of the day. I don't know how often you're using that word, but Hesse. So this one blows my mind. If you are playing baseball or any sort of sport where you need to go and make sure you have friction on the field, those are cleats because, you know, they have cleats in them. They don't use that word in the UK. They just call them all boots. Yeah, we've got uh, stud boots. With but studs I've heard you just call them football boots. Yeah, they're football boots. In American English, boots are pretty much just boots, like big you know, leather boots or you know, like Doc Martin style boots. Yeah. So calling shoes that have cleats in them boots, I'm imagining like a full on ankle bit, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I suppose the only the other way you'd use the term is for a large, large boot, like walking boot or something like that. But yeah, I, it just makes sense for football yeah. boots. I, I know exactly what I mean when I yeah. say it. It doesn't mean like a big boot, it's a football boot. Do you use the word bleachers over here? I don't think Where do you so. sit to watch the game in school? Well, we don't have... <laughs> <laughs> we don't have games. Leeches. I know. Wh where would you sit, though? How do you watch the you sports? You stand on the sideline. That's it's not a good tale of <laughs> She wears high heels. I wear sneakers. She's cheer captain, and I'm standing on the sidelines. <laughs> <laughs> but I find it hard to believe British people actually say... They don't say checkers. They say drafts. Yeah. Like, as in taking... Also, that's the same as when you're taking a, a draft of beer. Yeah, I suppose. Unless it's pronounced draft, is it? No, it's a, a draft. So I learned about this from RuneScape because I was like, oh, I want to play checkers, but then they called it... Drafts. Dra oh, drafts. Drafts. But when you pull a pint, isn't that called a draft as well? Draft yeah. beer. Yeah, draft beer, yeah. So it's like checkers beer. No. <laughs> Same with, you guys don't say tic-tac-toe. You say no, knots, knots and crosses. And crosses? Yeah, knots and crosses. That one's... Wait, hold on. <laughs> you don't... Tic-tac-toe. But there are knots and crosses in it. It literally no, is knots and crosses. We would never use in American English not ever ever. We call them X's and O's. Right. And if so. you say, "Do you want to play X's and O's?" We're gonna fuck because <laughs> we're kissing and hugging. <laughs> also, this is a, I'd say this is a cross because if you know, Jesus. <laughs> but but this is more of an X an cross X. X. When someone loves you very very much, they might put their mouth on your neck and give you a hickey in American English. But in the UK, you call them love bites? Yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like the sound of this. That's something that I've never heard of before, uh, before mm -hmm. research this video, a love bite. Yeah, I mean, love bite. I mean, we, uh, Americanization of English, we would also call them hickeys. I think that's probably now the more common term. Congratulations, Thank you've you. won. This group of words is the one that set me off for making this video. When you play hooky in the UK, it's called wagging off or skiving. Yeah, oh, skiving, absolutely. I'm not familiar with wagging off, but yeah, skiving. Okay, because Bliss was familiar with wagging off. Maybe it's a northern <laughs> Must be a thing, northern southern, yeah. But it sounds too similar to wanking off. 
Can you come into school today? No, I'm having a little wank and I'm wagging off. No, <laughs> I don't like it. Someone else would say it about you. Oh, he's wagging off, you know. So yeah, I suppose that would make sense having a bit of a, a similarity. <laughs> Working from home. What's the difference? But so you would say he's he's skiving. Oh, absolutely skiving. He's skiving today. There's... Would you really say hooky? That's the only thing we would say. He's playing hooky. So it's always playing. Yeah, you, you don't you play hooky. You don't just hooky, you play hooky. He's hookying, no. He's making hook, no. You only play hooky. He's playing some hooky. It sounds so weird. But that's the thing. I mean, I know, I've heard of it, yeah. but it sounds weird and like, to me, just skiving. skiving. Yeah, skiving is just, oh yeah, he's skiving. He's skiving's cool. He's skiving, there's another one. Oh yes, the other one was bunking off. He's Yes. Yo, so you're where bunking, bunking off. off? Yeah, I mean, you bunk off school. You don't want to go in the day, you just bunk off school. You have so many words for avoiding school, whereas we just have one. I wonder what that says about our education system. <laughs> Would you guys like to see me take another test, by the way? Because I've got some test videos coming up in July, possibly. So tell me if you're interested. But yeah, so did you ever bunk off? <laughs> I think there was one day I bunked off. I'm gonna call, the, call your firm. Sorry, she's actually not a good lawyer. <laughs> so when someone rats on you in school in the US, they're a narc, uh, which actually comes from drug enforcement agencies. But... <laughs> Or a rat in the UK, you say grass. Yeah. I can't believe that's a real thing. You grass <laughs> someone up. Yep. Um, just uh, this is the one that I truly just didn't comprehend as a real thing because it's just grass outside, just like grass. <laughs> just you, grass. You're a piece of grass. You're you're you a blade of well, grass. You would call someone a grass, but it's more likely that you'd say, "Oh, oh someone grassed him out." The so as a verb. Yeah. But why do you think it's come from grass? He's grassed. Like he's grass? Where do you think that could come from? I have never questioned this before. It's You've just, just been like grass. He's grassing. Like, he's grassed him out. Grassed him out? He's gr yeah. You've gr he was grassed out his friend. Okay. Like <laughs> <laughs> that's not real. Like that's one where I was like, I think some of these articles that write these words are making them up so that British people can have a laugh when Americans go, oh, he's grassing him out, and they're like, that's fake. Like Australians do with the drop bears. I've definitely heard that, but you're not the drop bears. Do you really, in school, call them plimsolls? I wouldn't say we call sneakers plimsolls, uh. because to me, they're two entirely different things. Plimsolls are a very specific type of shoe that you wear in gym class in primary school. Which are what sneakers are. Sneakers are... You wear sneakers in... Or tennis shoes, or what, isn't that what well, you no, call tennis them? shoes are different to Trainer, plimsolls. Trainers? Trainers are different to plimsolls. I thought plimsolls was a synonym, so that's why I thought... <laughs> I've never heard someone say plimsolls as an adult, because I didn't go to school here, so. Yeah, plimsolls are just kind of a very strange type. I honestly don't have to describe them. Yeah. I just want to say, plimsolls sound like something you get at the Morrisons next to oranges. Literally, yeah, they're <laughs> like... You buy them in the Tesco, they're just really uh, cheap kids' shoes that next you can wear in... Well, maybe not quite next to the orange. It sounds like but... a nectarine type thing, like a delicious plimsoll. Home. Yeah, it's not something you'd buy in like a specialist shoe store. No. It's just something, it's uh, cheap and it, for kids that are in primary school, it works. The plimsoll. I would just call these like slip-ons. They're slip-on shoes. I wouldn't, you wear those at gym? Yeah, like in primary school, especially, you stop and put on your plimsolls because... Because you guys have uniforms, so you have to switch into a gym shoe and those are cheap oh, gym yes. shoes. Standard shoes. Okay, because I was like, I was like, why did I never have to switch into shoes? Because we wore sneakers every day because we're wearing yeah. anything we want because we have freedom. Don't, don't know. <laughs> the third, yeah, that, that, the you guys use the word builder. That's a very popular word in the UK. We do not use the, we do not use the word builder in the States. We might say construction worker. You would just say builder. Yeah, the builder. For me, I think that's, it's interesting. And Bob, of course, the builder, mm -hmm. who, by the way, if you didn't know, we have a complete, even though it's in English, we made an American English version of Bob the Builder, so we didn't know that it was a British show. Even so what is it say builder. What is it called then? If it's not Bob It's the called builder. Bob the Builder, and we just assume that he builds things, even though that's not like a word we would use. So Bob the Builder is the only builder in America. Yeah. Have you ever heard his American accent? No. <laughs> I really think this will hurt you. Because you now, like as a child, you know Bob the Builder's voice. I'll be there as quickly as I can. Oh, yes. It was a terrible storm. Oh, hello? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. What is that? <laughs> so you're expecting him to sound British. I actually have never heard yeah. the British version. I mean, it just sounds wrong. Buzz, are you all okay? Oh, well, it looks like it's moving yet. Yeah, I'll be there as soon as I can then. Oh my god, he's so British. Wild. It was. Are you all okay? Well, <laughs> It was a bit scary, wasn't it? Oh my god, they are so British. <laughs> Very unexpected. Anyway, that was a big detour. Builders like Bob, they have plumber's crack, but you guys call them Builder Bob? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, plumber's crack? Plumber's crack. You know when they lean over and they show a bit of their crack? Yeah, Builder's Bob. 
builder's bum. You're not making that up. Like I said, this is that. This is what the video is called. You're not making these up. I mean, builder's bum. It makes sense compared to plumber's crack. But like, would you just use that for plumbers? No. Would that be any let's construction worker? Let's, like, let's say we're walking and the guy has a shirt that's a bit too small and he bends over a bit. But, oh, that guy's got plumber's crack. Mm, no. Really? I'd, yeah, builder's, builder's bum. bum. Yeah. Bricky's bum. I've heard it. I've yeah. definitely heard it. And the final one was builder's cleavage. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> no. Yes. Absolutely. Builder's cleavage. <laughs> that's not real. Yeah, that's definitely real. What if uh, that is uh, very assuming of you? What if the builder was a woman? Would she have two cleavages? <laughs> Possibly four. Yeah, she just have um, so much more cleavage. Like, oh, that builder's cleavage, and guys <laughs> like, what? Oh, that's a man's ass. I expected a woman wearing construction vest with a nice pair of cans of paint. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that was the one that blew my mind. You know when you have a really cute little plushie? Yeah. You know, like, this guy. <laughs> he is very cute. Is it true that you would call this, as opposed to plushie, cuddly toy? Yes. Because <laughs> he's cuddly. He's a cuddly toy. I just, I've never heard that. I feel like it's a very particular type of toy that Americans have and everything else. Like just a like, baby. A, yeah. A plushie. That kind of, to me, a Beanie Baby would kind of be a plushie, like a little thing that Americans have created and invented and doesn't really make it over here. And then everything else would be... Beanie Baby should Beanie Babies. We, we did. Worldwide. Okay. We did, but like it was a very American thing rather than a cuddly toy, which you know, everyone has. You know, at some point in the 90s, 50% of American households had at least one Beanie Baby. Fifth. Fifth. That, that was our Bitcoin back in the day. I had the Princess Diana one and I thought I was gonna be rich when I was in my 30s. In the US, if someone buys up all the tickets to let's say Taylor Swift, we're just bringing her up again, and then tries to sell them at the venue the day of to people that are trying to get tickets, they're scalpers. Yeah. Supposedly the UK equivalent is a ticket touter? Yes. <laughs> it's not a ticket touter. That's again one of the ones where you've you've won. Um, oh, yeah. I would also call them a scalper and probably that would be the, the first term, but okay. ticket touter, yes, absolutely. We would definitely use that term. And I, if someone were to say that, I would 100% know what it was. Okay. And I would just like, basically it's what does a touting scalper. Mean? Like, so. I'm assuming I can understand the context. They're they're touting the ticket. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of like, because they're sending it in person, they're, they're touting it. If someone's in the crowd and they're kind of not real, they're kind of just like, pretending that they like a brand. On Reddit, at least, we call them a shill, but you guys would call them a plant. Yeah. He's a he's a plant. I would definitely say plant over shill. Really? I, I, shill, I mean, I, I think he's I- Shilling that stupid uh, shit coin is something that you'd see. You wouldn't say he's planting it. What, is it trying to grow? Well, no, he he is a plant. He is a plant. Yeah, you does wouldn't say- Does the plant plant or does the plant shill? Difficult questions, rather. I still wouldn't use the word shill. It wouldn't shill. It wouldn't, oh. it wouldn't be in my- It wouldn't uh, with you. <laughs> not con chill with me. When I found out that you guys don't have the word stenographer for a courtroom, but you call them a shorthand typist. Yes. <laughs> I don't know why that one made me laugh so much. In the US, we have a lot of different words for one item of clothing. You could be wearing an undershirt. You could be wearing a wife beater. You could be wearing a tank top. And the UK sees all three and they go, vest. That's not a vest. That doesn't look like a vest. A vest is one of those things that you put on like under the suit. It's like short, has the buttons up. You call it a vest, vest top. Wait, I'm sorry, what What are you wearing under a suit? The, no, you know, like under the suit jacket is the suit vest. Oh, you guys Your don't call them coat. that. Oh God. <laughs> I don't think you were wearing some kind of crop top underneath your shirt whenever you're wearing a suit. I momentarily <laughs> forgot that you don't call them a vest. You call that a waistcoat. Waistcoat, yes. So That's called a vest. I also had merch that was a tank top that said, this is my tank top and it had a tank on it. <laughs> that was my punny era. If I wanted to take you to a store and I was like, mm, this place is nice, but I'd rather go to a higher quality store, one that sells a bit better quality items. You'd call that better store one that is blank. Upmarket. Is that so obviously it's real yeah you just use upmarket upmarket yeah i'd say it's upscale ups wait but then that's just implying it's larger no 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 scale the quality scales up it's upscale oh he's at an upscale food store at the moment you'd say upmarket upmarket yeah so it's you're you're assuming that it's a market then aren't you that it's the market upstairs well, the, the market oh god i'm questioning everything i'm yeah. like <laughs> Why would we say up market? The higher market. Yeah, so that's one where I've never used up market. I would say upscale. I've lived here nearly 11 years and there are still words that I find out I have never heard and I don't believe that they exist. Like grass and builder's cleavage. 
the big ones for this vid. Anyway, like I said, this is part of a series on this channel the next month where we look more into some British words. So if you're interested, please hit that big subscribe button because we got a lot more coming your way. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you to Heather for uh, guest starring on this one. And I'll see you next Sunday. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You ever notice British people go, bye, 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 bye. I always view that as quite an American thing. Bye, 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 bye.